Hello and welcome to the week ahead from the Financial Times in London. Here are some of the big stories we're watching this week. European Commissioner Jean-Claude Juncker will lay out his vision for a post-Brexit Europe. Car hailing service Uber launches its first driverless fleet in the US. And the Bank of England meets to discuss its latest thoughts on the UK economy. First up, there'll be a lot to cover for Jean-Claude Juncker when he delivers his equivalent State of the Union speech at the European Parliament on Wednesday. It'll be one of the first big events the President of the European Commission has taken part in since the UK voted to leave the bloc in July. But as well as Brexit-related issues, he'll also be aiming to address concerns over sluggish growth, the migration crisis, and perhaps of greatest focus will be security and defence. Brussels is hoping to tighten up coordination between the militaries of member states, an issue of controversy for Britain while it was part of the group. And although it has now gone, there's still some unease with the plan among others. Mr Juncker will be hoping to find common ground on the fight against terrorism, which has become a touchstone for members such as France. Here's what the Italian Under Secretary of State for European Affairs, Sandra Gozzi, had to say after the attacks in Nice in July. Abbiamo eh, discusso della necessità di un'Europa eh, che risponde in maniera ancora più forte, ancora più efficace eh, contro la creazione terroristica attraverso la piena attuazione delle decisioni che abbiamo preso, ma anche attraverso più cooperazione nel, nella, nel controllo delle frontiere esterne, più cooperazione tra i servizi di polizia e di intelligence, la costruzione e l'attuazione di una nuova politica di sicurezza all'interno e all'esterno dell'Unione Europea. Next week, residents of Pittsburgh will be given the chance to take a taxi ride of a different kind. Ride-hailing company Uber will be launching its first fleet of self-driving cars in the US city as the business moves into the arena of autonomous vehicles. The cars, a modified Volvo decked out with an array of sensors, lasers and cameras, will travel on public roads to test the limits and capabilities of the technology, although they will also have drivers present to monitor the vehicles. The move puts Uber alongside companies such as Google, which is already testing self-driving cars in the US. Uber's customers will be able to summon the driverless vehicles from their app, and it will be the first time the American public have been invited en masse into cars that can drive and steer themselves. The company expects to have 100 driverless cars on the roads by the end of the year, and in the long run wants to remove the drivers from the cars altogether. But as our motor industry correspondent Peter Campbell explains, there's still a big battle to be won over public perception of the technology. People don't want to get into a car without a driver, whatever they think of Uber or taxi drivers. That's why it's important Uber has this test in Pittsburgh, where people are able to beckon these cars and get in them, because overcoming public opposition and public scepticism around the abilities of self-driving cars is very important. And there are already some schemes being tested around the world. Singapore is testing driverless taxis at the moment. Tokyo wants to have driverless taxis on its streets by the time that it hosts the Olympics in 2020. The other important thing for Uber about this is it's a way to reduce their costs because robots don't get paid. And finally, the Bank of England's Monetary Policy Committee meet again next week. August's meeting saw the MPC come out all guns blazing with the buying up of government bonds, together with plans to start purchasing corporate bonds, all in order to pump money into the British economy at a time when fears over the impact of Brexit dominate. With so much already happening, there'll be little new left to announce on quantitative easing. What's likely to be of interest, however, will be discussions over whether the central bank overreacted to the initial shock of the Brexit vote. And of course, hints on any possible further action on monetary policy. Our economics editor, Chris Giles, has more. The Bank of England next week will give us an update on where they think the UK economy is about three months after the vote to leave the European Union. And really, the question is, whether they think we're still on course to have further monetary policy easing, another interest rate cut or something else, or whether the uptick in the data is sufficient for them to say, actually, we think we've done enough. So it's really guidance next week. They're not going to take action, but the guidance is very important because if it changes expectations, then that can really change the mood. And that's what the week ahead looks like from the Financial Times in London. See you again next time.